Walt Disney presents... Surprise raids made by the Swamp Fox and his freedom fighters against Redcoat garrisons and supply lines made a shambles out of General Cornwallis' battle plans. With his strategy disorganized, Cornwallis called upon his most capable officer, Colonel Tarleton, to hunt down the Swamp Fox and capture him. The wily Tarleton set an elaborate trap to capture his quarry. But the Swamp Fox got wind of it and turned the tables, leading Tarleton into a trap of his own devising. Tarleton and a few of his men fought their way out of the trap. And now, in this program titled, A Case of Treason, we find the elusive Swamp Fox chasing the very hounds that set out to trap him. sure knows where to go. You still don't think Mary's on our side, do you, Plunkett? You're going to marry the lady, General. You ought to know. I'll take your word for it. That's fair enough. We going to take him, friend? No, we'll ride over there and storm around a bit. Let Mary have a chance to show what a staunch Tory she is by defending him. Let's go. <laughs> it's the Swamp Fox. Are you sure, Joseph? He's on his hat and everything. Yeah, man. Hide upstairs, Colonel. I won't let him search the house. Have you a loaded pistol, sir? Mine's been fired. Yes. Here. Downstairs, quickly, Colonel. Open the door. I'll take the other one, Father. Open the door. I'll break it down. Joseph. slow answering the door, Miss Vidal. We open our door to friends, Mr. Marion. Tory sympathizers and redcoats, you mean? You're not welcome here, sir. Show him out, Joseph. I'll go when I'm finished. Then state your business. What is it you want? A redcoat officer by the name of Tarleton. We lost him hereabouts. Figured maybe you might have seen him. Well, have you? I'll speak for my parents. No, we haven't. I hope you're telling the truth, Miss Fido. If I catch you giving aid to the enemy, we'll have to put a rope around that pretty little neck of yours. And I must say, it's a neck to be kissed rather than stretched. Well, you certainly know how to use that hand, don't you? I also know how to use this. Now get out. Your charming daughter's loyalty to the crown speaks well of her training. I only wish that my cause could inspire such devotion. Good day, monsieur, madame. You have to cock the hammer on a pistol before you can fire it.
won't come back here very soon. I told him I'd shoot him if he did. I don't know how to express my gratitude. I should be eternally indebted to all of you. It was no more or less than any loyal subject of His Majesty would do. And now, if you'll excuse me, I'll have Joseph fix tea. Under the circumstances, sir, I don't think it'd be wise for me to expose myself alone on the highways. Would you be good enough to send a message to my Dragoon headquarters at Monk's Corners? I'll take it myself. You'll find paper and ink at the desk. Thank you. Will you be good enough to have Sam bring the carriage around, please? And uh, if you have no further use for that, my dear. <laughs> Corners, there. Said an old man be dope for an escort of dragoons. Ah, his talk was no fool. We gonna wait for him? Let's not stretch our luck too far, Peter. Back to camp. Most helpful, Monsieur Vido. I shall make it a point to inform my Lord Cornwallis of your most generous cooperation. Good night, Mary. Good night. I can't tell you how much I'm looking forward to our next meeting. Madam. Colonel. Monsieur Vido. <laughs> Lieutenant Peters. Yes, sir. We're going by Bull Creek Road. Very good, sir. glad that's over. Anything wrong, dear? No, I don't think so. It, it's just that Tarleton makes me nervous. He looks at me as if he were thinking one thing while saying another. Now, let's not imagine things, Mary. I guess I'm a little jumpy tonight. Mm -hmm. Dear Mary, I must know the number of dragoons with Tarleton and which road they're taking to Monk's Corners. Write it down so there would be no mistake and give it to my man Parker waiting in the garden. Who gave you this message, Joseph? I don't know, but it was dressed like one of Mr. Marion's men. Is there an answer, miss? I'll take care of it. Mr. Parker? Over here, ma'am. I'm sorry to disappoint you. You tricked me. That's right, my lovely. When Tory ladies are kissed by rebel leaders, we think they should protest more forcibly. <gasps> Lieutenant Peters. Yes, sir. Watch out. Dear Fran, Tarleton has seven dragoons with him, and he's returning to Monk's Corners by the Bull Creek Road. Good luck, darling. Sign Mary. Very touching little note, Miss Vidal. Enough to put a rope around your neck. You can't be serious. I was never more serious in my life. Passing out military information to the enemy is an offense punishable by death. Lieutenant Peters. Colonel. Would you see that the carriage is brought around the front? We're taking Miss Vidal to Charleston. Yes, sir. At last. Well, may I have a few minutes with my mother and father? Well, as much as I dislike hurting those good people, I suppose I can't refuse. What brings you back? Nothing wrong, I hope. A great deal wrong, sir. I'm afraid it would be a terrible shock to both of you. Please, please let me tell them. Maybe I can make it sound not quite so awful. You both know my sympathy lies with the colonists. I've made no secret of it. Your sympathy is one thing, but passing military information to the enemy is treason. In plain words, sir, your daughter is a spy. There must be a mistake, Tarleton. No, Father. There's no mistake. What the colonel says is true. I did pass information to Francis. At least I thought it was going to him. Unfortunately, it was a trick, and I was caught. The guilt is Please, not hers. Please, Father. It's only natural you should want to protect me, but the guilt is all mine. You and Mother had nothing to do with it. 
I'll gather a few things for the journey. Journey? What does she mean, Colonel? Simply that I have to take her to Charleston to stand trial. Would you be good enough to allow us a few words with our daughter in private? If you'll be brief, sir. Thank you. is one of the calculated risks. We've always known it could happen. But we can't let you take all the blame. We're in this together. But they don't know that, Father. You've got to keep them thinking you're loyal to the Crown and you can still be of service to Fran. The important thing is to get word to him. He could overtake Tarleton and release you. Joseph saw what happened and he should be on his way now, but Fran can't possibly get here in time. Now, just be the stern, unsympathetic parents and don't give yourselves away. I haven't lost my head yet. Don't talk like that. Oh, Mother darling, I really don't think there's too much danger. They can't afford to offend Father, particularly if Cornwallis wants his help. Now calm yourself. I must go. All right, dear. I'm ready. Allow me. I'm sorry. I wish you could forgive me. It would be more fitting if we asked His Majesty to forgive us. I'll do my best to see that my Lord Cornwallis understands your position, sir. Thank you. Goodbye. Oh, no. Now, now, dear. <laughs> chance of effecting her release was last night while they were still en route. Yes, unfortunately, I was away from camp when Joseph arrived with a message. You're wondering why I didn't go with Mary, aren't you? No. Knowing where your sympathies lie, I would have been very surprised if you had gone with her. Do you think I'd let my political beliefs overshadow my paternal feelings for my daughter? You're still here, aren't you? You have a poor opinion of me, Mary. I'm still here because Mary felt I could be of greater service to you by remaining here. Service to me? If even you are still in doubt, General, then Mrs. Vito and I have played our parts well. Are you trying to tell me that you and your wife have never been anything but dedicated supporters of your cause, General Marion? It was Mary's idea to have us play the loyal Tories so that they might gather in our home and supply us with information which she could pass on to you. I guess I will have that coffee now, sir. Oh, good. I don't know what else to say, except to apologize to you for some very unkind thoughts. Neither Mrs. Vito nor I blame you, General. And now that we understand each other, how do you suggest we go about helping Mary? Whatever is done must be done quickly. I, too, love Mary. You can count on me. I know I can, sir. But you'll be more useful to us if you stay here. I'll call on you if I need you. And good day to you, sir. Good day to you, General. Mary's a prisoner in Charleston, charged with treason. Well, let's call up the brigade and go get her. You want me to send up the birds and call the men in? No, we couldn't muster enough men to take the city. It's too well fortified. Well, we're we just going to sit around here and let them put a rope around the lady's neck? No, but we don't want to rush in and let them put one around our necks either. That wouldn't help, Mary. But the six of us could do it if we could just get inside that city. And there it is, a big if. Enemy troops will have all the roads blocked. Excuse me, Mr. Marion, but I hear your brother Gable say you can always sell a load of hay to the horse soldiers at the fort. Hay? Yes, sir. Of course. 
That could do it. Mind up, we're heading for town. Be powerful, quiet, everybody. There are two soldier gentlemen up ahead with some mean looking knives on the end of their muskets. Fact is, I suggest you stop breathing. You hear me? We hear, Oscar. Give me alive. Ah, you'll do it too. You know, Tarleton. Best let him through. All right. All right, come on through. Oh, stop the wagon. Oh. Uh, something wrong, soldier? I heard a sneeze. You trying to hide someone in that hay? Why, shucks, soldier, that was me. That's you. I always get to hate fever around hay. I show! I sure got it bad this time. You stay right there. Archie, you take the other side. Right up! Thank you. 
wife tells me you want to see me. You're the crier. They call me that. What do they call you? Swamp Fox. You? General Marion. I don't blame you for being skeptical. I managed to slip into town under a load of hay. It's not that, sir. It's the idea of our leader being here in Charleston in the midst of the enemy. Uh, believe me, only the direst necessity makes me take the risk. A young lady named Mary Badeau was brought to the fort today charged with being a spy. Have you heard about it? It's my business to know such things, sir. I saw the young lady in question. Mighty pretty she is, too. I might you believe that your interest in her is something more than mere friendship? We're going to be married after the war. That explains your concern for the young lady. Mr. Cryer, my actions are not entirely governed by personal feelings. Miss Badeau has helped our cause immeasurably. I meant no offense, General. How can I help? I want you to get her on board a ship and out of Charleston Harbor as soon as possible. And a destination? New Orleans, if it can be arranged. If not, Florida or Cuba. The risks are great, sir, but I'll try. Yes, there's a French captain in port, master of the Rochelle, favorable to our cause. Do you have any money? A few continental dollars. I'll give you a promissory note, though. The captain's hold full of continental papers, sir. He uses it for ballast. But I think it can be arranged. I hope so, sir. You understand, sir, that it's up to you to deliver the lady into our hands. Yes, yes, I understand. Oh! Now, where do you think you're going with that lad? To the stable, sir. To her, and he come back after him. Well, this here is fresh from Colonel Tarleton, sir. He told me to get here the first thing this morning. Tarleton, eh? Yes, sir, and I don't like to rile that man. Neither do I. Go on. Yes, sir. Get up. Well, our luck is still holding. How soon will you know if you can arrange the passage? Oh, a few hours at most, sir. You better stay here. I'll have my wife send you up some food and drink. Thank you, Mr. Cryer. I'll be eternally in your debt. Our country is already indebted to you, General. Stay tuned. Walt Disney...
Yes, Oscar. I gotta find out a way to hide Miss Mary. Hey, if you see anybody with a roast chicken, why send him this way, will you? With a bottle of wine, too. Oscar, you be careful. If they catch you, we're all finished. Yes, sir. Get out. near the cells. Clear out. General Cornwall is waiting for you, sir. Yes, I know. And the A arrived all right, sir. Hey? What hey? The A you ordered, sir. Field Dan's unloading it now, sir. The stables. That's odd. I don't remember ordering any hay. Let's take a look. Yes, sir. Here. There. By the cells, sir. That's the one who brought the A. I know that fellow. He rides with the Swamp Fox. Want me to arrest him? No, wait. <laughs> Good luck, dearie. So that's it. That's Watson. He's here to contact Miss Vido, and you can bet your sweet life that Marion's somewhere here in Charleston. Don't let him out of your sight. Right, sir. Oh, there you are, Charlton. You're late. I know, my lord. I was detained. Mary, my dear, can you ever forgive us? Locking you in those cold, dirty cells with all that rebel riffraff. It was a shameful thing to do. It was more than shameful, my lord. It was heartless. Now, see here, Tarleton. It was your idea. Yes, you're quite right, my lord. But I can now see how wrong we were. You can? Wrong? Yes, if Mary would excuse us, my lord, I'd like a word with you in private. Very well, but be brief, mind you. I, I have to get home to see if the arrangements are made for the party tonight. Please. I'm pressed for time. My dear, you should be eternally grateful to your friend Tarleton here. Indeed. Without his intervention, a terrible wrong might have been done you. Well, I really don't understand. What my Lord Cornwallis is trying to say, Mary, is that we don't wage war on the daughters of our Tory friends. Exactly. Colonel Tarleton has convinced me that we would be doing a grave injustice to you and your loyal parents if we treated this matter of spying seriously. So I shall try to consider it as a father might. If you were a daughter of mine, I would be inclined to look upon your behavior as the foolish act of a lovesick girl. Give her a spanking and forget the whole matter. Oh, oh thank you, my lord. And you, Colonel Tarleton, from the bottom of my heart. Not so fast, Mary. There's still a little matter of a spanking. <laughs> well, you're a little big to put across my knee. So I shall simply ask you to give me your word that you won't engage in any more activities of a military nature, even to help your sweetheart and send you home. It's a common practice, Mary, known as accepting a parole. It's much healthier than losing your head. Believe me, I have no desire to lose my head. Shall we consider it settled, then? I gladly give you my word. Good. Now for more pleasant business. I'm giving a masked ball at my house this evening. Just a small affair, really, to liven up the ugly business of making war. Please do me the honor of being my guest. I'll send you home first thing in the morning. In the meantime, I'll dispatch a note to your dear parents to relieve their anxiety. As much as I'd like to, I can't possibly. I have nothing to wear. I have no fears on that score, my dear. The ladies will see that you have everything you need. Order my carriage around. Very well, my lord. Excuse me. Sit down, my dear. Uh, orderly. Sir. I'd like you to go down to the bottom. Yes. Rides his horse. 
I'll see if it's ready. I said the carriage. He's taking that Fidel woman they got in today. It's sure pays to be a looker. I didn't think she'd stay locked up for long. Never mind what you thought. You hear what he said, Colonel Lorry? I heard, Oscar. It changes everything. It sure does. It's just like running your hand into a hen coop after a chicken that's already been stolen. Here comes the carriage. Bang. you back in we'll make a run for it now get moving yes sir. get out dancing with this bit over there in the orange mask. dancing with Miss Vidot was the last. Will you watch him so while I check my men? Certainly. What are you doing here? I came to get you, of course. But how did you know I was here? Oscar was hiding at the fort. He told me. Oh, why? I'm 
I'm in no danger. They're sending me home in the morning. Is that what they told you? It's true. I gave them my parole. I don't trust them, Mary. Dance toward that door leading to the garden. Oh, please, Fred, don't do anything foolish. Now, there's nothing to be frightened of. There's a carriage waiting for us in the street if we can reach it. When we get there, pretend to be faint. It's so warm in here. May I get you a glass of water? Oh, breath of fresh air will do nicely, thank you. Do you mind? My pleasure. Walk toward the gate. No one leaves, sir. And are you giving orders to your superior? No, sir. Just carrying them out, sir. Hmm. My men are all in place, my lord. The fox is in. He won't get out. you there after, not me. Get out any way you can. We'll both make a try for it. I'll go up the stairs, and while they're watching me, you try to slip out the door. You'll get outside, make a run for the carriage. It's been a pleasure, my dear. Remember, if anything happens, I love you, darling. And I love you. This man is an outlaw who has conspired against the crown. In order to apprehend him, I must ask you to unmask at once. You, sir, would you mind stepping down here? an eye patch, or shall I have the soldiers do it for you? You went talking. Ladies and gentlemen, may I present the Swamp Fox. Nice work, Todd. I'll cite you for this. I regret I don't have a sword to surrender, Tom. Would you accept these? I shall even wear them in the next masked ball I attend. Uh, yes, yes, never mind the amenities. Lock him up, Todd. Soldiers. My lord. Miss Bedeau, would you be good enough to join us? Why? She gave you her parole. And you accepted it. That's right. It was merely part of the plot to trap the fox. Surely you didn't think that... Unfortunately, I did. Take them away. Stay tuned. Walt Disney Presents will be right back. Lieutenant Peters, lock them in the tower. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, and put them in adjoining cells. They can hold hands through the bars. Yes, sir, I understand, sir. Oh, and another thing. Strip him of that officer's coat. He isn't fit to wear it. Guard, escort Mr. Marion and the lady to the tower. This way. Any further 
order, sir? Just one, Peters. Don't disturb me tonight under any circumstances. For once, I should be able to go to bed without concerning myself with the Swamp Fox. Yes, sir. Dragons! Dismiss! I couldn't believe it either, son. Till I saw it with my own eyes. We can use that Cornwallis carriage for Mary. O'Reilly, you take care of the driver. Bring it up when you're shooting. Be a pleasure, sir. Oscar, I want you and Gwen to take care of the horses. Run up and I'll try to carry this off without sounding a general alarm. But if we can't, don't hesitate to shoot. Yes, sir. Come on, Ewald. There goes the officer. General should be alone now. Question is, how do we get from here to yonder without shooting somebody and raising alarm? Well, we need a diversion. What do you say we release those Patriot prisoners? Oh, sure. I suppose you got a handful of keys to unlock jail cell. No, but that simply does. You get him to turn his back to me and I'll take care of the rest. Well, go on. We can't stay here all night. I hope you know what I'm doing, because I sure don't. Hey, Ewald. Yes, soldier. Where did you come from? In yonder. Oh, yes? What are you doing out? Well, I, I was just out looking the town over and I forgot my key. Would you mind opening it up for me? You're up to something. Oh, no, I ain't. You stay right where you are. Rebels any good at busting heads with stove wood? Let us out of here and we'll show you, friend. Grab a chunk and start swinging. Yeah. 